It's match day in the Premier League. We've got Arsenal against Brighton at the Amex Stadium. Transfer news to discuss, Mikel Arteta's press conference and the latest Brighton team news also from Roberta De Zerbi. This is the Arsenal News Show. Hello and welcome to the Guna Talk back with you guys for another episode of what is the Arsenal news show uh, on the Guna Talk. The reason why I'm slightly exasperated is that I think everything is at the moment, and I'm touching wood, working. Now, for those that have been listening the last few days, know that we've had some incredible technical problems. And I'm not promising that they're fixed 100% because they may not be, but I have been up since about half five this morning trying to sort out a problem trying to sort out the issues we are running on the new laptop we are running on wired internet with an adapter we are running on the this microphone believe it or not the one that usually turns me into an alvin the chipmunk through another adapter we're using the new camera on the new laptop which makes me look a lot cleaner i'm hoping and hopefully this is the best looking it's it's in for quite some time so collectively we're going to cross our fingers is what we're going to do. We're going to cross those fingers. I can see Ames is already doing it in the chat box. So everybody collectively, please. And as you're crossing your fingers, you press the like button. That's how it works. Okay. So make sure you drop a rest on the like button. So you help us to get to a thousand every single day. Um, and just an appreciation for trying to sort out everything. So I'm hoping that this is peak TGT throughout the whole of this show. Because every... Every bit of investment we've put in to try and make this happen is 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 on today. So I'm hoping that this is going to work and that it's as smooth and crystal clear as it possibly can be. It's been a long morning and it was a long night. I was out last night with a few friends and uh, got in, not to be fair, not too late, only around 11 o'clock. I found a new technique as I get near 30, which is called the, the two to three beer technique, which is like understand where you feel your best and stop. And then go on the soda and limes after that. And that this is my new technique, <laughs> which I've been trialing out as well. And I feel good this morning and I feel fine. So I think uh, it's, you know, any way to better yourself, I say. Good morning to those joining us uh, in the chat box. Really appreciate your time as always. Have a fantastic day on Saturday, I hope. And I hope your Friday evenings was good as well. We've got a game to talk about too. Blackshine, good morning to you. To Matt G, to Damien, to Glenn, Franklin, Arasilki, Stephen, uh, A1, Martin, True Fact, Amira, Matt Tomo, TDG. We've got Josh and Peter. We've got Shari, Mr. Ree, Stevie Kaiser. We've got Tabani, Mr. Ree, Ismail. Thank you so many to you for all tuning in. It is incredibly appreciated. I can see some plenty of new and uh, other faces as well in the chat box, which is always great to see you also. So thank you uh, for everyone that's tuned in. And uh, I'll get back to you in part two for um, questions. But without further ado, let's jump into today's stories. Uh, we start with a roundup of the Premier League games that are taking place across this well, this, this weekend, really. Uh, we've got Crystal Palace first up against Manchester City, an opportunity for City to go top of the league, of course, before Arsenal play later today. Uh, they won that game last season 1-0 with a very tight penalty. That's all that it was that got them that win. Will we see a repeat of that? Can Crystal Palace do Arsenal and Liverpool a favour? I guess we'll have to wait and see. Uh, Aston Villa against Brentford is the first three o'clock kickoff, along with Everton against Burnley, Fulham against Newcastle, Luton against Bournemouth, Wolves against West Ham. And then at 5.30 is the big one. Uh, we've got Brighton against Arsenal. Of course, Arsenal looking to be the second side to win at Brighton this season um, after a very good, in the league at least, a very good season for Brighton at home. It's been their away form that's been in question, but uh, it's been a place where we've had mixed results down the years. Last year, we got a good, uh, uh, last season, we got a good result on New Year's Eve, but uh, hopefully we can repeat the goal scoring feats that we achieved at the Amex last time around. Then on Sunday, I'll talk more about these tomorrow, of course, but we've got Manchester United against Liverpool, the big one. Sheffield United against Chelsea and Tottenham against Nottingham Forest. So they're all of the Premier League games from this weekend. Now, Roberto De Zerbi was speaking to the media um, ahead of the game against Arsenal as well. Uh, he talked about some of the absences that we saw uh, over the last few uh, kind of games. The Brentford game, they were missing some key players. We saw Ansu Fati missing. We saw Webster missing. We saw Barco missing. 
Um, and we saw Ferguson missing. He confirmed that Ferguson and Webster uh, and Gilmore are all out of this game. However, Ansu Fati and Barco will both be available for Brighton today. Um, Ferguson not being there, I guess, is a bit of a, a plus. But of course, they've got Danny Welbeck and they've got Joao Pedro, who are also very good centre forwards that they can use in today's game. There's no uh, Mitoma. He's not available, hasn't been available for many weeks and is, I think, what we believe to be out for the rest of the season as well. So plenty of uh, interesting team news from the Brighton side of things. And Mikel Arteta also faced the press yesterday as well, was asked a number of questions. First, we can talk about team news. He was asked about Bakaya Saka. And he says, we will know now. We have a training session in a few hours and we will know whether he is fit or not. He was asked further about Saka, as Simon Collins of the Evening Standard asking some of the questions on Saka about how worried he is about him burning out towards the end of the season. He, he says, I'm super positive. I think he's going to fly and be so decisive. Uh, he was asked about kind of the setbacks with his injuries and he says he's so strong and how much he wants it. When you talk to him and how excited he is about what is coming, he wants to be here. Uh, he's being and getting better and better and it's normal to have little niggles. Uh, you have kicks and he's gone through a lot of that in the last two or three years. And now look at the way he's performing. Um, and he is performing when, you know, fully fit. I think we can say that Saka is obviously one of the best players in the league. But when there are question marks about his fitness, question marks about how um, fit and available he is, of course, there's always going to be, um, I think, some undermining of his ability and his performances. But if you have a fully fit Bakaya Saka, we know that he can be a huge asset for us. And hopefully that continues to be the case. The problem was is that we didn't see Saka in any of the training images that were released by Arsenal yesterday. Now, that doesn't mean he is not going to be available for the game because, of course, we know that Arsenal are clever and they know that we go through these pictures with a fine tooth comb. Um, but it could have an impact uh, indeed. It could be an ind uh, indication that maybe Saka is not there. Gabriel Martinelli was, which is great to see. Yuri and Timber, you can also see in the picture on the screen if you're watching on YouTube, is involved in the images as well, which is another big, big positive. Uh, Arsenal's under-21 game is on Monday. Will we see Timber involved in that? Will he play the one next week? I guess we'll have to wait and see. But seeing him involved in training again is, is another really big boost and certainly a positive sign because he hasn't been spotted in some of the recent images that they've put out um, in recent weeks. So that's, that's really, really good. But just going back to that press conference and some of the other questions uh, that Mikel Arteta was asked uh, from the weekend. He was asked about the changes that were made uh, from the weekend uh, rather from midweek against Luton. He says, I was obviously very pleased with the result and performance and the fact that everybody responded in the way that we expected. When you change things, there is a possibility because you haven't played that much. But I think the, boy, the boys were really good. He was asked about Emil and he says, you could see that. But I think an example is Reese. In the previous game, he was not in the squad. and the next game, he's ready to start. If someone doesn't react the way that he did after, you are not ready to perform. So I'm really pleased with that kind of reaction in the team. Emil was really strong in the game. Game. It's actually something I'd not touched upon or really talked about too much because um, Nelson wasn't in the squad for the game uh, against Manchester City at all. He wasn't there. And yet he comes in and starts in midweek as opposed to just being on the bench. And what that tells us, of course, is players, even if they're not in the squad, can come in, start and make an impact. I know that there were some discrepancies, I think, between people um, and how they assessed uh, Reese's performance. It was a little rusty at times. You know, I think he, he took time to kind of get into the game somewhat. But he had some really good movements, really good contributions. Defensively, got back and defended. But in the first kind of 20 to 25 minutes, he was a bit slow in responding to counterattacks. But he grew into the game before coming off in the second half. Uh, overall, he was very pleased with both players' performances. And, and he certainly should be as well. Uh, but our final story... Before we go to part two is on transfers. And according to Portuguese media, Arsenal are said still to be leading the race for both Goyocares and Diamande. Two names I think that we can all agree we are going to be talking about a lot as we lead up to the summer transfer window. A deal for both players would potentially require Arsenal to activate both players release clauses. Victor Jokerez has a 100 million euro release clause around 85 million pounds uh, and Diamande has an 80 million euro release clause which is around 70 million pounds. So expensive, very expensive. Could be 150 million pounds to get both players through the door if Arsenal wants both players and certainly both players would add plenty of quality to this Arsenal team next season. 
do Arsenal have a chance of signing another striker? I know that other players are of interest to a lot of our listeners, um, but whether or not indeed Arsenal are moving for them or if they're available is another question. Of course, Isaac is another one that a lot of people like. David Ornstein coming out a couple of days ago and saying, as I mentioned on yesterday's show, that uh, it's unlikely that Isaac will leave Newcastle during the summer, despite all this talk of PSR, very unlikely they would allow Isaac to leave. So interesting to see how these ones play out. And you can be sure that we'll continue to give you updates on all of Arsenal's transfers. And we'll be building up to that more intensely and talking about more transfers as we lead up to the opening of the summer window and the European Championships, of course, in the summer taking place as well. Now, if you'd like to be a European champion or perhaps a global champion of being able to change a geolocation, then you need NordVPN. And you can do that by going to nordvpn.com slash guna to get yourself a significant discount off a one or two year plan. If you go with the one-year plan, you get three months thrown in free. And if you go with the two-year plan, you get four months thrown in free. How smooth was that? And not only that, but of course, it gives you the safety and security that you need to keep yourself safe and secure online so you can keep those pesky peeping top bowlies away from the transfer targets that you want Arsenal to sign so that Chelsea don't get their grubby little mitts on them. Uh, you can go down to the link in the description or, as I say, go to nordvpn.com slash guna to get yourself that significant discount. And if you're not happy with the service for whatever reason, you can get a 30-day money-back guarantee as well. Who can say? Any fairer than that? Well, I can, because I can say that we're going to go and talk for as many of your questions in part two right after this. Okay, part two. We're holding out. There's been a little couple of dips in the internet, which, you know, I think is just to do with the internet in my area, clearly. I can't have wired connection. And there still be problems like it, that's out of my hand. I reset the route this morning and was as well and everything. Like I went through every step. I did the whole British thing of turning it off and turning it back on again. And if that doesn't fix it, we all know, everybody knows there is no other solution that exists. You can turn it off and back on again. And if something's not fixed, you need to throw it out. That's how it works. Whether it's a toaster, whether it's a router, whether it's a kettle, whether it's a console, turn it off and turn it back on again. We know that fixes everything. And if it isn't fixed, that means it is dead forever. Gone. There we go. Right. Let's go into the chat book, shall we? And uh, tackle some of these questions. Uh, Ryan says, uh, what's the most clean sheets Arsenal have had in a season? And what's the record for any team that's tried, uh, that's that's got clean sheets? That's a really good question. Uh, Arsenal this season, I think, am I right in saying we've got something like, is it 12? Uh, maybe more than that, actually. I think maybe it's more now. I think I was looking at that recently. Clean sheets. Uh, clean sheets, Premier League player stats. Um, David Ray has got 11 clean sheets. And uh, I thought, this is just, is this just Arsenal? Is it all teams? No, yeah. Clean sheets, 23 24 season. Uh, David Ray has 11. But of course, Ramsdale has kept. He kept one against Brentford, it, uh, so that's 12. I think it is 12, right? Um, Dwayne says Chelsea have the record with 15. Premier League clean sheet record. Shall we have a look? Clean sheet record. Um, clean sheets, Premier League stats. No, I want... What is the Premier League clean sheet record? In 2005, the inaugural Premier League Golden Glove was awarded to Petr Cech Chelsea. Checks 24 clean sheets in a single season remains the current record. Apparently, it's 24. That's crazy. That's mad. Uh, and Dwayne, I think you, I think what you're saying with the 15 is how many goals they conceded in a single season. And I think they only conceded 15, which is mad. Like, absolutely incredible. Jose Mourinho there uh, with quite a, a ridiculous thing. But yeah, 2005 was the inaugural Premier League Golden Glove and Petr Cech kept 24 clean sheets in a single season um that's that's mad <laughs> that's crazy uh but john says oh they ain't got 24 clean sheets this season Way! <laughs> so that's always that to, to look at as well uh which is great but yeah 24 is indeed very wild um that meant Mourinho defense uh proving very very good indeed uh damien says can they schedule michael Arteta's press conference after the final training session damien they could they could but I don't think they will. <laughs> and the reason why they won't is because it allows them to be somewhat 
coy about it. We're not idiots. Like we know how it works. Like when our t- when we when they had we get told when the press conferences are. I, th- I believe I could be wrong, but I believe Arsenal are the ones that decide when they're going to host. They they are like, um, what's the word? They are obliged. They are they have to to do a press conference. I believe uh, for every Premier League game. Um, Sometimes they combine them. So what can sometimes happen is that you have a, like a European game. And if you've got a European game like we used to in the Europa League on a Thursday and there wasn't time to have a press conference on the Friday um, because they were flying back from wherever they were on an away game. So last season, I remember being, um, I think there was a press conference after the sporting game and they they did the press conference kind of in the second half of the post-match sporting one. So sometimes they did not enough time. But they have to have kind of a presser. I think there is like you know res- restrictions or whatever laws in place where they have to do them. But they have kind of um, freedom, I think, about when they put those press conferences. As long as they, we get told when they are, obviously, so we can go and attend them. Um, but they def they definitely one hundred percent put them before the last training session because that means that they can say. Well, we've got one more training session, so let's wait and see who's going to be available. <laughs> it's very obvious what happens. Um, John says, did you get to ask the questions you wanted yesterday? Uh, I wasn't at the press conference. I don't do the press, uh, press conferences this season. Um, I'm done. I'm not, have I haven't done any so far this season. No, I, I do the mix zone after games for players and stuff, but the press is our, our chief Arsenal writer. Kai Kainet does that at the moment. So anytime he's on holiday, I'd be in the press conference, but otherwise not. Um, but uh, yeah, only the player stuff. But there was um, a question about Timber on before the looting game. And uh, so he was asked about it then. Omer says, uh, are squad selections really done so last minute or is it Arteta always being tight-lipped in presses? He has a plan of what he wants to do. He will have this idea in his head about what team he wants to choose. Um, but they get submitted on the day. So the Premier League, you have like a deadline of when you have to submit them by. Broadcast then gets them before it goes out publicly so that commentators can get kind of their notes ready and uh, presenters on, on things can get their notes ready. Some, sometimes when you see team news leak like 15 to 20 minutes before it's released, it's because somebody has uh, leaked it from from one of those uh, broadcast sheets. I imagine that's how it happens. So uh, anyone that's got access to that is leaking it. You know kind of how they're getting that information. Uh, Vishal says, should I start Saka in my FPL team? Vishal, it's an impossible question, mate, because he could start. He might not. We aren't in the know at all about whether or not Saka is going to be available. And I don't think we will have any idea really until after the deadline of FPL, which is, I think, what, at eleven. I think I still need to do some some changes this morning. I had a decent week. I had both Palmer and Foden in my team, so double hat tricks for them this week. Yeah, the deadline is eleven o'clock this morning. Um, but see, I captained Havertz uh, against Luton. He got an assist, but had I have captained Palmer or had I have captained Foden, then. I would have got some insane number of points. Uh, Kyle says, Tom, these days, every young player that is coming up in the Premier League is always compared to Saka. A few days ago, it was Kobe Monu. This week, it's it's Palmer. I mean, it's just natural. I mean, Saka has become the benchmark and that's, you know, props to Saka. That's a testament to how good he is and how good he has been as a player. So, Yes, that's always going to happen, but it is the reality. Uh, Puria says, what's the status of Vieira? Is he still injured? No, he's not injured. Um, He's been on the bench the last few games. He's available to be picked. He's available to be brought on. Arteta just hasn't done that. Um, So, yeah, still we are still uh, awaiting the reintegration, the fully reintegration, I guess, of of, of Fabio Vieira. If his injury happened earlier in the season, I think you would have seen him play more. But because we haven't had the games really to give him the opportunity, we're not... We're not doing that. Um, Pear says, why do you pronounce it? Um, what? Mook delivery. Um, oh, sorry. Yes. I know you're listening to the TalkSport. Um, <laughs> the the, uh, the TalkSport sponsorship. Um, that's just, just how I pronounce it, Pear. Um, that's just, just the way. It, I, I guess it's colloquialisms, if that's the word. So there you go, Pear. Sorry, mate. Um, you're going to have to deal with that. That's uh, for those that listen on audio platforms. You uh, know exactly what Pear is talking about. Um, World Citizen says, now that we have stopped inverting the left back and playing Kivior as more of a traditional left back, um, should we cash in on Zinni in the summer and bring back Tierney? We shouldn't bring back Tierney, no. Tierney's not of the level. I'm sorry to break it to people that really like the guy. I like the guy. I think he's a good player as well. But he's not of the level. Um, He's not 
of the standards that we need at this, you know, competing for titles. He's very committed. He's got a great attitude. Um, and he's still a good player. But sadly, he is not of the level required in the style of the defender that we want in those positions. And Tini's time at Arsenal will, I imagine, come to an end permanently in the summer. I'd love for that him to come back and prove me wrong. I don't think he'll be given the opportunity to. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't think that's the case. Uh, Vishal says there's 760 people watching live, but there's only 210 likes. Are we still hitting 1K every day? We are. We are still hitting 1K every day. We've not missed a beat so far with our uh, our morning shows, but uh, doesn't mean that we can slack people. You know, we need to make sure we're dropping a like on the video. I always wonder, like, because it, it costs nothing. It's just a little one press on your screen. And there is, like, 790 people there's 133 on twitter as well but if you're listening on twitter hop over to youtube because then you can jump into the chat box and ask your questions on youtube it's 700 people and there's only 200 likes i don't get it 500 people just sitting there going now nah, i'm just gonna ignore him and ignore him see how he likes it you know <laughs> who are you who are these people <laughs> i don't understand arnold says i think i agree with arteta we only need to sign one world-class player now or rather we only need to sign world-class players now uh, the key is to cash in on the players and then we can buy more indeed uh, john says tierney's finished at arsenal he's already admitted that he tried to be a right back and arteta wants uh but arteta yeah he wants to be the, the he, arteta wants a certain style of fullback Tierney doesn't fill in, like, fill in that bracket. Yes, we're not inverting on the left in the terms of Kivio, but you still have to do certain things as a fullback at Arsenal, even if you're not inverting. And Tierney, sadly, hasn't been able to do those things that Arteta wants. Um, Pratika says, we're just waiting until the end of the show to decide if we like it or not. <laughs> Is that it? I get like feedback afterwards. I like, hmm. Is it worth my like? Is it worth this one little movement of my thumb? I'm not sure. Um, Franklin says, I always forget. I need to be reminded to like the stream. Try adding a poll asking if we've liked the stream. No, because the thing about humans, right, and I count myself in it to some degree, is that we like to see the world burn. <laughs> and as soon as I put a poll up saying, have you liked the video, people will just want to press no. Because people just like seeing the world burn. That's the problem with society these days. It's just people just like misery. People just like that. So, yeah, I can't do that, mate, because I don't want to give the opportunity for people to watch the world burn. <laughs> uh, Alistair says, hi, Tom. I really like the awkwardness with the plank uh, north side. I mean, north side's all right. I've had a few... Um, I've had a few conversations with him, you know, back and forths on on Dan's show before. I wouldn't describe him as a plank. I think he's got, you know, I hope his heart's in the right place. And I hope that, you know, he's clearly a big fan of Arsenal and he wants Arsenal to succeed. Do I agree with the way in which he talks about it? No, I don't. But uh, I've still had plenty of conversations with him and uh, it's been sound. Uh, Jay says, uh, who do you think would be the next dynamic duo like Lacazette and Aubameyang? If we get players like Solanke and, uh, Solanke and Muniz uh, as a duo, that would be insane. But I'm not sure if that would fit Arteta's style. Um, I, the, the duo thing's interesting. Like the Lacazette Abamyang dynamic completely undermined our situation, really, at Arsenal because when we signed Lacazette, we then lost Alexis Sanchez in January, like months later. And what we did was is that we signed Abamyang to replace the goals that was lost by Alexis leaving. The problem was is that we'd signed Lacazette to be better than Giroud, but he turned out not to be. And then we spent another 50, 60 million pounds on Abamyang, who played in the same position as Lacazette. We tried to use Abamyang in a wide position alongside Lacazette, or we ended up changing them and interchanging them between games. But what we had was is two huge players stand out investments in a squad that needed investment elsewhere in the same position. And we always needed to invest in a midfielder and we always needed to invest in a defender. And instead, we were top heavy with Aubameyang, Pe uh, Lacazette. And then Pepe came in, we spent £72 million on Pepe when we still needed to sign a top centre half and we still needed to sign a top centre mid. We signed Lucas Torreira. It didn't turn out to be, it didn't work. I mean, Unai Emery ended up kind of ruining Lucas Torreira. I think there was a real player there. I think actually he's gone to Galatasaray and I've, I've heard a few good things about what he's done there, but Unai Emery wrecked Lucas Torreira was never used. I was really curious to see if Arteta had taken over with Torreira there, what would have happened, you know, if he was given more time. Ultimately, Torreira's time was kind of done by the time that Arteta came in and we signed Partey 
Um, obviously, and Torreira actually went the opposite direction, didn't he? He went to uh, Atletico Madrid on loan for that season. So, yeah, it's it's a shame that it didn't work out. But I would have been intrigued to see what would happen if Arteta had more time at the start with Torreira to see what might have worked. But it, he'd already been ruined by Unai Emery at that point. Um, Reese says, Kivior is part of the best defence in Europe. Uh, Tierney is not better. I, I have to agree. Like In terms of pure defender, in the style of what a man City and an Arsenal type fullback is these days. Kivior is, is is better than Tierney at the moment. Like he's proving to be better than Tierney. He's, we brought him on against Liverpool at 1-1. We win 3-1. He's been really key in that game. He's been in the starting team that kept a clean sheet at Manchester City and helped stop them scoring in a 57-game scoring run. If you're not rating Kivior right now, I don't think you ever will. It's as simple as that. Uh, Kazang, thank you so much for the kind donation. Uh, Kazang says, will Bayern get the golden... Uh, sorry, will Bayern Leverkusen, I assume that is, get the golden trophy if they win the league unbeaten uh, in the Bundesliga? I don't know if that happens in the Bundesliga if you get a gold trophy for going unbeaten. I, I hope they do it. I really do. I, I like Xabi Alonso. I, I like Granit Xhaka, obviously, a lot. I like their team. I like their style. I love how attacking they are. I love players like Jeremy Frimpong and Grimaldo and the goals and assists they've got this season. I always like Patrick Schick, as you know, on the channel as well. They've got a lot of young players. I think what they've done is, is brilliant. They've kind of revived as well the reputations of some other players like Jonathan Tarr, um, Edmund Tapsoba, They've got some really good players at Leverkusen. They've got a really, really good coach as well. And I, I think that if they go unbeaten, you got it's, it's not for me from an Arsenal perspective. I don't see anyone ever going unbeaten again in the Premier League. I just don't see it happening. Um, but other leagues, it's it's different. Obviously, you know, the Bundesliga is not as competitive as the Premier League is, but it's still a very good league. So what an achievement it would be if they did end up going invincible. Because um, Ang says our record would be broken. It's not. It's not the same. Kazang. It's a different nation. It's a different league. It's different. Our record would not be broken because it's about being invincible in the Premier League, which obviously Bayer Leverkusen can never, ever do. Um, Chris says, I agree with Elliot on what he said about preferably going for a wide forward instead of a striker. If we could, Rafael Leal, Diamande and a midfielder, preferably maybe Joshua Kimmich. I think Kimmich would be an excellent bit of business for Arsenal. I don't see there being the midfielder that's kind of there to take Arsenal to the next level and replace Partey in the long term. So I think Kimmich is a really good two to three year option for us until that next Declan Rice becomes available for us to go and get. Um, so yeah, 100% Joshua Kimmich, please. Uh, Robin says, Javi Simmons or Rodrigo? Uh, Javi Simmons, uh, 100%. Um, Rushnav says, Juventus have already gone unbeaten uh, in Serie A as well. Yes, it's a very good point. They have. Um, so again, it's not. It doesn't affect us. It's different. It's a different league. Um, the walking man says there's other uh, teams that have been invincible in Europe. It doesn't stop us from being unique in the Premier League as well. Absolutely. Uh, Arnold says, don't forget, guys. Tommy Asu is better than Tierney. He's a great defender, but helps us go forward as well. If only he could stay more fit. That's that's all we could hope for with him. Uh, James says, if you had uh, a win card for Arsenal that could be used in one fixture before the end of the season, which game would you choose to use it on? Um, I have two schools of thought with this, James. Because one, you could say the next game, which is Brighton, because you want to keep the momentum going. Um, or you can pick what you think is the hardest game. Now, I think a lot of people would say that Spurs away is the hardest game. And there's a good argument that that is correct, that Spurs away is definitely the hardest game of the rest of the season. However, Old Trafford, for some reason, no matter how bad they are, no matter how terrible they are, no matter how embarrassing they are, no matter how little accountability their manager takes, for some reason, Old Trafford always, always is a problem for us. And I cannot ever get my head around why we cannot get over that mental block of Old Trafford. So despite the fact that you'd think it would obviously be Spurs, there's something about that Man United game that I cannot help but look at and think, give me a win there in the penultimate league game of the season as well. You know, if we're still in the title race and if you win against United, you're in the you're still in the race come the end of the season, could be massive. So for me, I think that United away game. Now, some people are saying Bayern Munich, which is completely fair. I'm not picking Bayern Munich because even if you beat Bayern Munich, you've got to go play Man City or Real Madrid and then you could be out of the competition. I have for me, I have to, for me, have to pick the Manchester United away game. So Old Trafford for me, 
would be the one free hit win card I'd take, James. But let us know what you go for in the comment section down below. I like that question. Um, Guna76 is keep Vieira or Smith Rowe. Uh, Smith Rowe. Um, Vier- Smith Rowe, I know what he's capable of. Smith Rowe, I know what he has done. I know that there is such talent there and he's shown that in this shirt. Whereas Vieira, there, there, there isn't that. You know, I haven't seen enough of Vieira to know whether or not he would be able to make it. So I'd keep Smith Rowe. Uh, Amira says, uh, looking at our defensive record, shouldn't it emphasize the need to manage both the centre backs' minutes? They're too important to play every second. Only tried Tommy Rice, etc., um, at centre back once this season in a cup game. Potentially, yeah, but it is arguably the position on the pitch that requires the least amount of. Um, expenditure of energy um and so therefore you don't necessarily have to rotate them as much as other positions should we be potentially um but the injury that Saliba suffered against Sporting was an injury that is just bad luck Tomiyasu the injury he suffered is just bad luck so yes Gabriel is carrying something of a minor foot problem um, maybe that's being monitored and managed as well. But there may be games where we can choose to rotate them. And if not, we need to manage their minutes by taking them off and bringing Tommy Yasu on or moving Rice back into defence and bringing another midfielder on. You know, there are things that we can do. And maybe our tech needs to be a little bit savvier to that. But it is the position on the field, at least from my view, especially in an Arsenal team that dominates possession that requires the least amount of energy expenditure. So that's worth thinking about. Um, I'm going to end the show there. Thank you so much, guys, for listening. I'm hoping that this has delivered finally a issue-free show. I know the connection may have been... I've seen a little uh, symbol come up in the top left-hand corner a couple of times saying the internet has wavered slightly at points. But other than that, I think hopefully it's been pretty smooth sailing. I'm hoping this is going to be the case going forwards. No promises ever, of course, with this. Um, But I'm hoping that it has been a very smooth show. Um, So thank you for listening. Leave all your feedback down in the comment section down below. Enjoy your Saturday. I'm going to go do the food shop now before I start work. I'm not heading down to the South Coast. Um, I'm going to be covering the game from home, but I will be covering it. So you can, of course, uh, if you're unable to watch the game for whatever reason, you'll be able to get persistent and consistent updates on the football.london website on our live blog. There'll be reaction. There'll be our test press conference. And then tomorrow morning here on the channel, I'll be live at eight o'clock in the morning to break down that very game have a fantastic saturday i hope that it delivers for us the win that we need it to and uh, i will see you all tomorrow morning stay safe stay well stay happy and respectful and as always up the arsenal